Well, again, welcome, and we'll proceed right along. Um, Greg McGarry will address the uh, letter delegation and open there. I know quite a few people in the room, and I know that there's a lot of you thinking that acting for a supervisor behind my name is a scary thing. I agree. It's, it, it's a typo. It's a typo. With, without any further ado, uh, many of you have been on the pay yet. Uh, welcome. Uh, here we are again. And for those that haven't been here, uh, welcome. Uh, this letter of delegation is to uh, Paul Broyles, Incident Commander, and uh, it's to uh, follow the situation, whoops, uh, wildfire situation analysis alternative A, which has changed as of your showing up here. And uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, this, delegation of uh, this delegation authority is uh, to make sure that you ensure public and personal safety, uh, to follow the 10, 18 situations, use lookouts communications, that's LCS, and uh, I'm sure it'll be in your safety and, and, and IAPs. I look forward to that. Uh, provide for the protection of all structures, especially those at Ford Hall Hill. We also have a major power line in front of this fire. Okay, cost efficiency is important, but this is a full suppression action. So whatever we need to do, uh, do it cost efficiently, but our goal is to get this fire out. Uh, the fire is located in critical uh, bull trout habitat. You'll have some resource advisors assigned to the team, and they'll introduce themselves and make themselves known to you. They'll be working with you throughout the incident. Uh, I expect a high level of conduct, ethical conduct, from the people that you will supervise. We'll get into a letter that we have posted in this plan. I think it's a little too soon to talk about rehab. You could read that portion in there when we get done or closer. There will be some uh, uh, rehab guidance that you can follow. Uh, I mentioned working with the resource advisors. I think we have two really good resource advisors on this uh, district. and uh, and. Uh, I think they'll help you along and uh, we'll do, do the right thing. Uh, we want you to maintain a regular communication. This is going to be a very highly visible incident. So the communication skills your team exhibits are going to be very important and needed. Uh, if you need more help, hire it up in the fire information and uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll do fine there. Uh, Mary Farnsworth is the District Ranger at Council. Uh, any questions or changes to the WIFSA, we'll be going through her. Uh, like I said, Mike McGee and Alan Zolman, we already pointed them out as your resource uh, advisor. Carol Fighter will be your incident business advisor, and uh, she'll be answering your questions on financial problems. And uh, myself, uh, Acting Forest uh, Fire Staff. Any questions, Paul? Okay. The next thing I'd like to cover is uh, conduct of your folks on the assignment. This is very important. <coughs> All the employees, supervisors, and management officials share responsibility for ensuring that high standards of ethical conduct are going to be carried out throughout this incident. Uh, mutual respect. Uh, we want mutual respect. All, all our interactions with the people on the on the fire, the community. Uh, you know, we've had problems in the past, and I'm sure you folks won't won't condone or allow any. Uh, illegal drugs or vandalism such and uh, if you do have any problems of this kind we would more than help gladly help you uh, solve any of those problems uh, next on the agenda Mary's going to talk about the WUFSA well I, I will be brief as, as the wildland fire situation analysis um, has been exceeded and so we'll be doing another one this evening so I won't get in in detail to the alternatives because we'll be needing to develop new ones. So bear with me on that one. What I'm going to do here as we go through the, the WIPSA, I'll have Sam in his phase of things talk about the fire situation, the fire weather, the current conditions. So I won't go into that. Um, so I'd like to spend my time talking about the objectives. Um, and I do not believe those to be changing very much. Uh, when we review the work stuff and amend it or develop a new one. So I'll call your attention to a few things. The safety of the firefighters and the public is where it's at. That is our number one priority and it should remain throughout the incident. It is a big deal and we need to make sure we're following policy and doing the right thing for our folks. Um, that includes the public and 
We have some challenges on this fire with Highway 95 going through. We have a, a tremendous number of looky-loos. We have folks that are evacuating or, or starting to do that. So we have U-Hauls. We have a traffic diversion um, from Highway 95 on a gravel road, and it's marginally two-way. Shake the deal, uh, not enough dust abatement, those sorts of things that we need to probably tackle pretty darn quick in working with the sheriff and the county folks. So that's going to be something that you're going to need to pay attention to, and our objective is to make that a safe operation. So it's going to take your attention. Um, regarding safety, the, the conditions, as I'm sure you guys have uh, kind of been picking up on, is, is we're in a weather condition here that's not conducive to controlling this fire. Um, Sam will go into the weather a bit here. Um, we'll be able to provide you some, some weather. Um, but bottom line is, this is not a good trend. We're expecting some winds here in the future. Uh, next couple days is similar, or if not, in excess of what we're currently getting. So big heads up, this is not, nothing setting up particularly well for us in the weather department. And, and the fuels are just uh, pretty darn dry. Um, concerned about the traveling to and from the fire. Um, you know, looking loose or looking up, and the firefighters are getting kind of tired, so something to pay attention to. Expect pretty good adherence there to the two to one rest <coughs> guidelines. We need to be adhering to that and taking care of folks, and certainly the driving once again. Aviation safety, we're on the edge of a type one show here. Um, we have filled, uh, I don't see you there. It's going to be helping us out, and uh, with that, I think we're very solid. Um, and so we'll be kind of looking at that. But it is a very large air show. We have huge power lines. They are the primary lines into McCall from Hell's Canyon uh, power. Drove past them coming up. They're kind of low slung. <laughs> and if we go into looking at a worst case or an expanded alternative this next go around, uh, those are going to be something we're going to be dealing with. But uh, aviation certainly should know about those and other power lines. Uh, concerned about the public safety, certainly the looking at the folks that are moving through just as a travel on Highway 95. So <coughs> safety is going to be a big deal. We have evacuated some folks. Um, we have an area closure in place, and we have maps, and uh, I believe the description is on the table. Oh, Rob. Okay. Rob has those description of the area closure. We've taken some action, made sure folks are out of there, um, but we will need to ensure um, that it's posted at the intersections to maintain that closure, especially as this thing gets a little bigger. Uh, homeowners, uh, we have a lot of structures, and uh, we have a lot of folks that are really wanting to, to know about their houses and that sort of thing. So we'll, uh, information-wise, we'll need to really take care of those folks, uh, make sure they're briefed, um, but also deal with the potential hazards on the line and on the fire and ensure we're taking care of those folks. Um, economics, um, certainly we have structures ahead of the fire, as well as behind the fire now, which we had success the initial attack folks really worked hard <coughs> and we were able to protect a lot of things yesterday, very fortunate. Um, so we do have structures going on here up the canyon, up Highway 95. And we have some wooden trestles on the, the uh, Weezer River Trail. Uh, I'd like to take care of those if we can. So some improvements there. <coughs> timber, we have a sold timber sale in the front of the fire. Uh, and if we go into an expanded situation uh, that will be in peril and so we'll be, <coughs> be aware of that and we'll be able to provide you with some of that information. Um, t and &E species, we mentioned the critical bull trout. Um, we've got some great resource advisors, not just good, and uh, they'll be able to help you out. So we really like uh, the ops folks to be working close with them uh, so we can make things work for everybody and uh, take care of the bull trout. That's our biggest species. Uh, the retardant into the East Fork of the Weezer River is going to be an issue. We want to be kind of sensitive on that. Uh, but at the same time, not being super restrictive, we're going to put the fire out. So um, if you can work with uh, Mike McGee, he'll help you uh, 
be talking about uh, the retardant in the rivers sorts of things. Uh, we do have some sensitive plants. They're past their life cycle, but they're existing in the scab lands, and so if we're doing any bulldozer work, we need to lift the blade and be somewhat sensitive to those plants as much as possible. Mm. We have some wildlife uh, management indicator species, uh, some goshawk nests, I believe. Alan will work with you identifying where those are, uh, see what we can do just to be mindful of them. And certainly water with the fish, we have some water concerns uh, regarding fire retardant chemicals in the waterways. Uh, social impacts, we encourage you highly to use local resources in town of council, New Meadows, Cambridge. Uh, we have a lot of good things uh, in those towns to be utilized. And so anything you can do there uh, would really help the community. We're already doing that with our initial attack sorts of things and been real successful in, in achieving some uh, some community support in the way of, of support. Um, this is going to be a high visibility fire from the standpoint of the town and passerbys with 95 being a travel corridor. Um, I would like to ensure that we maintain top-notch com community uh, chats. We've already instigated a daily uh, community town meeting there at the district office, so I'd like to talk to you folks about that and ensure that we continue on with that as well as posting things around the town. So those are some objectives, some things to be aware of, um, and so I believe those will carry through in the next iteration of the situation analysis. I uh, apologize for uh, having already exceeded it, but sometimes those sorts of things happen real tidy as we go. Uh, look forward to an excellent working relationship with the team. Um, I'm yours, I'm at your disposal, and I'll be around a lot. Um, we caught the initial spot up, it was about 100 by 100, but uh, before they got around to the complete head, it, uh, it spotted out from light fuels, uh, fuel model 1, 2, grass uh, type into to fuel model 9 with a little bit of a brush uh, underneath the ponderosa pine. Once it got into that, the, the wind, uh, of course, got the spot there and the wind uh, continued to push it and uh, we uh, had air resources on it uh, pretty darn quick uh, so we just weren't successful once, once it, it got into that fuel model and uh, the low RH is uh, you know, bordering on single digit uh, and temperatures at uh, roughly 90 degrees so same thing happened again today we were we were doing well until about to 2.30, 3 o'clock, uh, again, the winds picked up and uh, it spotted again across the East Fork. We picked up a spot this morning that spotted uh, about a quarter mile from the initial run. So there is some, some mid-range spotting, uh, obviously short-range spotting got us into the predicament uh, yesterday and I um, imagine that will continue to happen. Um, <clears throat> Looking at the, the weather, because um, I, I was on the fire at 2.30 and uh, had this briefing already for you, and we got a report from uh, the uh, lookout on the Weezer District, uh, Sturgill Peak. She called in uh, winds at uh, <clears throat> 25 gusts to 30, and they weren't uh, predicted to be quite that strong today. They were predicted to be 15. So I think you got predicted winds in your forecast for tomorrow for 20. Um, you might amp that up uh, 5 or 10. Uh, we typically get winds in the Council Valley there when we get in this weather <coughs> push between the low and, and, the, and the dry air <coughs> mass coming off the four corners. And that, uh, you'll see that things start to move around 11 o'clock. The inversion held uh, this morning till about 10:30, 11 o'clock, and and then you can just, you know, it lifted real quickly, and the and the heating of the day, and, and we got into those uh, burn conditions again. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. There, uh, fuels-wise, uh, Mary mentioned the the Gaylord North timber sale, which is out in front. Um, also, uh, across uh, East Fork is uh, is a sale that was. Uh, sold in 96 but we had a flood event uh, it's, it's called the fourth gulch sale 
So all the way from fourth gulch to first gulch, I'm pretty familiar. Walked that, hiked it. Um, there's a lot of fuel in there, a lot of a lot of stems per acre, uh, a pine needle mat that's uh, like walking on a mattress, you know, six eight inches deep. Uh, dug for north stringers that are they're pretty well stressed, uh, susceptible to, to good fire behavior, uh, particularly in the, after 10, 11 o'clock. Um, <coughs> I'm a little bit uh, <coughs> running short here because uh, we've been trying to chase this thing. I <coughs> thought we had it. Uh, we did lose one structure. Uh, everybody is, is doing the best they can. Uh, we found ourselves, as most uh, folks are in a situation, just short of people, short of uh, equipment. Uh, so I'm sure you'll find yourself uh, kind of in that mode for the next day or two anyway. That's all I got, unless uh, somebody's got questions. Bill? How far are you uh, from the power lines right now? Um, last report was there was a 40 acre spot there uh, around first and second gulch. So we're still uh, a couple miles from there. Uh, a little, maybe a little more update. We had a fire in 2000. I could give you a little more on the, the uh, maybe the importance of that power line. In 2000, we had it uh, in a compromising situation, and we were working with Idaho Power, and that uh, is a main source of power for McCall. In peak season like it is here, uh, this time of year, it, it, it would have a big effect if that would go down for any period of time, which would in turn affect operations for you uh, in St. Paul. Your stuff is, a lot of it's coming through my call. Worst case scenario, when go on to the <coughs> north, how far that thing can run, realizing nobody can predict fire of it. You want to answer that, Mary? Um, <laughs> worst case scenario, it could go as far as Blue Bunch Ridge. Okay, I'll walk through the checklist with you folks, and it falls right along in your handout you've received there. Basically, I think Sam covered the fire situation with you as far as the size now is probably up around 1,000 acres, somewhere in that range. <coughs> Things started uh, yesterday, and the cause is still under investigation as to what happened out there. But basically, uh, fuels are off and going. I think you're on top of that. The initial attack incident commander was Joe Brinkley. He's available for any information you may need. Current resource on the fire, uh, kind of catching here, but we've got uh, about three and a half crews. These are type ones and about 10 to 12 engines at this time. And on order, we're trying to get your crew strength up to a dozen crews. We've got six type one, six type two. And most of those should be coming in today. Uh, we've got delivery times uh, looking at sometime this evening, John. Get through that. So that kind of matches what we've got there, and I think you've had a chance to interface with logistics and go from there. Uh, <coughs> trainees, we do have one trainee. Of, I know you brought quite a contingent with you for that. We do have one from the forest. It would be a strike team crew that would like to tie in with you, if at all possible, or engine. So we can work through that area. And on the same note, yeah. It would be Rob Dines. Maybe we can make him available. As far as uh, any local personnel, we do have some of our overhead and whatever tied up out there. At your convenience, we would like to get those three back up to their normal jobs. Our initial attack is getting tapped down pretty low at this time. As far as special control situations, I think you can see what's going on out there. We've got. Extreme burning conditions, our Haynes index is between a 5 and a 6 right now. And the big thing's been the erratic winds the last few days. So it looks like there's no particular break in that in sight. And given with the really unfavorable weather prediction, it looks like it's going to be interesting here for a little bit. <coughs> uh, what's threatened? Again, Mary touched on that in the rest of the staff, but basically we do have homes involved, the power line like we mentioned as well as fish habitat and this type of thing and the drainage is there. 
and resource advisors, as mentioned, will be Mike McGee and Alan Dolman. Okay? And these folks will work directly with you. Any questions, uh, feel free to lean on those folks. As far as the case site, uh, that will be the Adams County Fairgrounds and Council. I think Johnny may have an opportunity to go down there today and look that over. Okay, great. And on that. And as far as maximum capacity, probably upwards of 600 or more, so it's pretty wide open as far as what you may get into there. Communications, uh, in the process of getting that set up, and Harold, have you got anything moving on that at this point? Well, what we got right now is uh, we were getting your command repeater put up, I think, was probably useful enough right now. And we put it right where the problem with the start is actually, uh, I'll show the company leader later. We give you some coverage now to start your fire, but, and then uh, we work to try to get some linking equipment up here because it's going to expand where we're going to have to build. And we have some other situations with elevates that we'll work with you and get that straightened out too. Uh, I think your telephones are all in. Or dang close to it. I don't know if you get quite 15, but they're all good. And uh, other than maybe tomorrow I'll trying to work, get some cell phones locally there because all the cell phones from up here don't work down there. And I think that's probably where I'm at about now. And it's cool. okay. So coming right along. As far as location, I think most of you have seen it, probably even driven past it, but you're about six miles north of Council on Highway 95 and approximately 20 miles south of New Meadows. Right down through that country through there. As far as the fire situation around us, uh, today's been an interesting day. I think everything around us is pretty much very, very active. Uh, our north fork of the Lick Creek, we've had the Brenner's team on for the last week. Uh, basically the northeast corner of it's very active. You can probably see the plume coming up on it. Uh, we still have two crews remaining up there, actually one right now. So we kind of backed off that and had a corner get loose on us. As you walked in here, you probably saw another smoke off to the southwest. That's the South Fork Fire in the Boise. And that just evolved today. And understand they are mobilizing a Type 1 team on that one. And some similar situations are going on in the Salmon Chalice and throughout really the whole area here. So we're not alone. It's uh, turning into a pretty widespread situation here. Uh, within, of course, the Deep Creek Fire over in the Pocatello, Idaho Falls area is still active. Uh, that too is getting quite a bit of attention. They too had structures involved on that one. And then throughout the Great Basin, Utah has a couple of problem fires down there. We do have the MAC group functioning at both the Great Basin level and national. They're preparing the levels four right now in both criteria. So any competition for resources will be coordinated through those units there. Okay, as far as initial attack uh, for the team, we would like you to handle any new starts in IA within the parameters of your uh, TFR. So five by five. Yeah, And Hugh's got that all mapped out for you, and should you'll see that pretty well. And that's something we can work with you on on that deal. Okay. As far as equipment available locally, uh, in question asked. John's very familiar with the area here, and we do have uh, a lot of contract equipment, dozers, uh, water tenders, that type of thing. And also, the rural fire department has this type of thing we can probably work on some agreements with. So, just uh, time with the logistics and expanded, and they can give you a hand with that stuff. Like you mentioned the TFR is in place. And uh, Hugh's got a good handle on all that winding up on that deal. As far as restrictions on any type of equipment, uh, they are asking for no user, dozer use, excuse me, in the riparian areas down through that country. Uh, no blade down, walking across scabs, basically any dozer use, this type of thing. Work it directly with your resource advisors. Coordinate with them and they'll help you get lined out on that. Also, we'd like you to watch the retardant use in any of the watersheds. And that'd be the Weezer River as well as the drainages there and the Bench Creek and the Fort Gulf, this type of thing. And one of your supplemental handouts here does deal with the use of retardant foams in the riparian areas. So, it's a good direction in that area. Okay, as far as ground traffic, as far as coordinating that, uh, we'll tie back through Adams County Sheriff for that support. 
highway traffic or traffic patrols needed on that. And I think I mentioned your incident business advisor will be Carol Fider here. And Patsy, I think, will be helping out on that a little bit. Okay, so they'll be working very closely with you. Uh, liaison, some other agencies. Currently, we're solely involved. It does involve private land where it started, but we're the only agency involved at this time. Okay, any co-op agreements? We do have co-op agreements on the helicopter spots we're using and two or three places like that. Uh, agreement has been signed with the fairgrounds down there. And as far as that, uh, like I say, the fire did start on private ground, and I believe everything else is covered. And those are available to you, John, if you need them. <coughs> the socio-political implications, uh, really the biggest thing is the loss of the, you know, structure threats down there to the homes, the power line logging, fish, aquatics, this type of thing. So the values are there. <clears throat> okay, as far as fire information officer interface, Boyd Hartwig is the forest information officer. And here in your handout here is his information. Also later in the packet is a sheet kind of addressing the information set up here. And that will probably be being beefed up here as we get more active around the area. Any restrictions as far as dealing with the media flying? Uh, we just request you work through Force Dispatch here. We do utilize the uh, flight authorization forms and set those up for you. And just log anything like that through the media here. As far as other items, uh, basically we do hold a daily briefing in this facility here daily at 4 o'clock, 1600 hours. And we'd like to request that either Call yourself or one of your command staff attend that. And basically it's the one where we can't touch base with all the different logistics functions to support people, kind of co you know, coordinate what's going on. And it does involve, if we've got multiple incidents, we can kind of set aside beside and work out what's going on. It works well. Okay, as far as the role of pay at logistics, Dean Martin's over here, and that's Dan here. I didn't see him. Oh, Dan's done it. Okay. Working. They kind of coordinate that. And also, John, your plans chief is, or logistics is very familiar with it. He helps us out considerably. But we do have a very large organization that travels a lot of transportation, goes through the warehouse, all the costs, all the work. So I think you'll find it very helpful to you. Okay, as noted in your delegation, <coughs> transition time will be tomorrow morning at 0600 hours. And as far as key contacts, again, I won't go through verbatim the rest of this package. You've got lists back here that do have the key contacts list as far as phone numbers, uh, radio frequencies for the forest. There's a copy of the hotline critique that we will use during the closeout. Also, the incident team evaluation, and that's the same tick sheet that's in your red book. Uh, medevac plan. Uh, we do have a couple of concerns here. Gary, you might want to address that from the Forest Dispatch. Yeah, the only thing we uh, request on any medevacs coming off the fire, that any aerial medevacs whose hey, KF Dispatch gets involved in that and notified. We've had trouble before with the medical unit leader doing something and we get wind of something and we're both moving it. The medical unit leader could just contact us on any aerial medevac. And also there's one typo in the in the plan there, the council does not have a hospital anymore. They have a medical clinic in there. But if you want any specifics on it, just stop by. Gary, I also have updated stuff in the financial <coughs> guidance on, on for medical stuff, not for your fly med medevacs, but just for normal clinics. Okay. Yeah. Not attempt to overstep your medical unit, but please coordinate that through pay dispatch. Okay, as far as the information officer briefing, there is an appendix here that addresses that appendix B. There's also a little statement on our recycling capabilities. Uh, again, I won't go through these, but they're there for your reading. And then attached is, uh, we've got separate documents here. I guess, John, I can give these to you, but basically they're appendices, basically D, E, F, and H. And what they do address is there in your handout, uh, basically suppression rehab guidelines, 
the suppression guidelines related to fish and critical habitat, aerial delivery foam and retardant, and then the spill prevention and countermeasure plan. And there's, we didn't make copies for each packet and then just save paper, but there's 15 copies there you can place where they're needed most. So that's kind of the key items on our checklist. Uh, any questions I can answer at this time? Okay, I'll turn it over to Greg. I think I've waited. I didn't avoid, but I <coughs> welcome in commissioners and, and Don Emergency Management. I apologize for that. I'm glad to have you here. Um, I'm sure you can see this uh, this uh, hall fire is uh, is uh, something else, and uh, I have all the faith in the world that you folks will, will manage the incident uh, appropriately as professionals. Uh, Paul, when we get done, we can go and sign this delegation. Uh, the only thing I, I I hesitate to keep bringing up safety, and the only safety message I really want to leave you with is doing the job the right way is safety at its best. Okay, and you know how to do that. And please watch yourselves, watch each other. Uh, if you see somebody who's who's fading and not doing the job the right way, uh, bring it to their attention, okay? Uh, that's about all I have. Uh, are there any questions? Don? Uh, I notice that we're diverting traffic off of Highway 95 right now. Right. Getting onto a county road. Right. Uh, how does the county get reimbursed to uh, take care of that road after it's done? Carol? Yeah, we're talking about how we're going to get her doing that to finance chief, and I just, she brought it up. So. Okay. So they're they're, they're that. talking about it. Very good. And could I have that gentleman's name? Uh, Don Horton. Don Horton. Okay, thanks. <coughs> Greg, there's presently one county water truck on there right now, but he's having trouble keeping up. But we're going to have to see if we can get another truck on there. Well, we, I'm sure we have ordered uh, okay. Okay. Right. And that truck's doing what? Watering roads or supplying watering the watering the road, the the going to Kirkville Glendale, okay, the, the bypass, but it's still real desperate. They can't keep up with them. Under policy, and, and I surely understand the policy, but I'm a little concerned about <coughs> the corridor and, and the power line uh, by using uh, cats up there. I just seems to me that that the philosophy should be to be able to get up there and build a big fire break because the truth of the matter is that that's a corridor in itself. It's already been mitigated through Idaho Power. It's been opened up. It's been utilized. Um, I'm concerned, very much concerned, if the fire reaches that. That power line is going to cause some economic disasters in this whole area. And if that's, you know, that's a big, it's 138 line, and you're not going to put it back together and just by, it's going to take some time to do that. So I'm real concerned that the policy is policy, but I would hope that at some point in time, common sense will drive where this needs to go. Uh, let me let me answer it like this: um, the fire behavior we're experiencing. If we took and put four or five or six blades wide and opened that line up, would still not mitigate the fact that we come across. We have done. We have spent an, an enormous amount of money in air support to stop this fire where it is. And once it gets up and running through that timber with the slope, the humidity is the wind. Uh, if I were to tell you we can do eight or ten and knock every piece of stand of timber when it's spotting a quarter to a half mile away, um, uh, we're concerned too. We are very concerned. And we know what you're talking about. Um, we've been there before. And we know what the fire behavior is going to do. We'll do everything we possibly can to stop the fire. Our desire is the same as yours. Uh, it would just be it would just be too overwhelming a, 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 a task to take and, and try to avoid the, the fuels with cats or even cutting and still end up with the same situation given given one string of timber going up the right way. And we're not taking it lightly. We're not taking it lightly. We're putting a lot of effort into this fire. Bill, one thing else that might help me out is to bring you all the way up here. Uh, they ordered four dozers, and I think they put two on each way. And that was several hours ago. So, those are going to be the We'll use them every bit that we can. Yeah, we will try to, we'll try to get around. 
but if you're if you're thinking to, to go out in front of it and, and to several questions I have. Go ahead. Uh, it probably is in here, but I didn't I didn't see it right off the get go about uh, press releases handling information. Do you want that to be handled? Boy, here, you releases here. Do I need to hook up with your information officer? Really He's driving that. up here right now. Jeff, okay. Jeff Guildhouse. Okay. So we'll tighten it again. Yeah. We've already sent a release out and we a lot of community outreach already today. Okay. So we've got a good plan in place for that. Okay, so we'll just keep that in place then and the releases will come from, from here rather than the incident? Well, it'll be based out of uh, the council range. Okay. And that way they can do community outreach now. Okay. But I'll work with your information officer on that. Any other questions? Uh, reporting in, you want a, a daily report in in the morning, uh, contact to you personally or to, of course to I'll be seeing Mary, I'm sure. And Mary, you'll, you'll, you'll see you're here. Right. <laughs> yeah, go through. The other way around, either way. So. Yeah, go through Mary. Okay. She'll be at, you'll be at every, every brief, I'm sure. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that when we break. Yeah. We got the IBA, found out about the county commissioner, so I'll visit with y'all here in a little bit. Uh, trainees, you've only indicated one. At but this time. You've got more. We're more than happy to, to take it. Yeah, I, I, probably everybody's out fighting fire, so it's been hard to come up with a trainee. That's That's if we do, we'll let you know, Paul. Just know that, that they're more than welcome. Okay. Okay, section chiefs, anything uh, specifically that wasn't covered that you need input on? I'll be working with Carol. We've already been starting to talk. So there's no sense. Okay. Anybody else? Do you guys have a contact for idle power? Or a way we can get in touch with a local person. Well, I'm sure there is down at council. We'll look up. Yeah. Okay. We'll need that. Well, we'll need that, and then uh, uh, we need resources information too, so we can lock in on accurate information on that. So These two gentlemen are just <coughs> waiting with bated breath. Uh, <laughs> we can do that. Why all the resources in order? Well, a combination of what's here and everything. We need resources on the fire unless it's been ordered. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, we'll get you. There's type three I see out there. It should have some logs filled up to some two levels and on what's uh, what's on the fire. One question: I was talking with Karen earlier, and I understand GIS support is available. To the yes. Team. Is that correct? You bet. And the ever popular copy, John, is it down there in the fairgrounds yet? Or? Okay. It's Barry, are we able to get into the Ranger District to use your copier tonight? Yeah. You should have your copiers around uh, between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight. That's when you should have your copiers and your fax machines. We can work a deal. You're more than welcome to anything we can provide you out of the district office. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, this power line issue concerns me greatly. If it starts running at that power line, I think we need to have a contingency plan in place, uh, particularly from my standpoint, of how much effort we want to put in putting aircraft around the power lines. And uh, I think that's probably a pretty high priority for both the team, Paul, and also for the payout. Good point. The local folks here, too. So okay. we can get that going. Yep, that would be good. With some trigger points. We need trigger points, and that's for the conversation with idle power. We need to see what needs to be done relative yeah. to prepping that, yeah. prepping that line. Good. Good. Anybody else? Just Jill? Greg, uh, before our fire, the fire departments, as those contacts get away, we just need to make sure that they're dialed in with our group as far as the contacts and our little 600 briefing right. and that kind of stuff, because sometimes they get dropped through the cracks, you know. Right. But, transfer of information. Right. I'm sure when you get down and going down tonight, if you can time with the type 3 ICs, get those contacts and, and, and bring them in. Okay. Anybody else? I have uh, phone lists here. I'll just leave them on the table up there and anybody that would like one. They have the expanded dispatch and other good numbers. Uh, we'd like to add your ICP numbers to this list, so as soon as you get those, if you let us know. And then any changes or corrections to the list, you can just call our front desk here and we'll 
We'll put out a new list every day and we'll be handed out the 1600 briefing. I also have copies of the resource orders for the resource unit leader and John, and I'll just give them to you after the, the meeting. Thanks, Mark. You. Got one more thing that's appropriate to the, uh, this type of briefing, and uh, it's on finance for aircraft. Uh, we have uh, approximately, until I get with Gary, I think 16 helicopters assigned. And they are assigned to haul subject to a, a telecom we had with uh, Bob D uh, Mike Dudley and Bob Keelan. But I want to assure both IBA and our finance chief that those will also be used on other fires and that the aviation unit will split out everything to fires down to the tenth of a flight hour. And that is to co cover us very, very well in any uh, post-fire review by finance. Okay, I just want to admit to that. I have a cost unit leader in aviation, so that <laughs> Um, All finance folks are smiling there. I know. I you hit all of us. Ice cream bars and lattes. Really? I'm not smiling yet. Yeah. Well, I, I made a commitment. Then you'll smile if you see it. Anyone else? Do we have a, a bunch of maps? Do we have some maps to hand out to these folks? Maybe district maps? Or? Sam? I, I can set you up. Karen's available for EIS for if we have some of that. But just for a time, we can find this. Okay. Uh, thank you. That was an excellent briefing. We got most of the questions answered. And I know that uh, what we need to do now is to break out with our counterparts for the next well, half hour. So we'll make it uh, 1930. We'll reconvene with the team here to, uh, to do the wrap, final wrap up and get our plans for the, for the next operational period in place. Uh, so, at this point, let's just go ahead and break up with the counterparts. Be back here in about half an hour. Um, I know that plans will want to visit with GIS folks, for instance, uh, fire behavior with, with uh, new probably, and so on. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Got the air plan up there. Yeah.